So we've just shot a feature film in six days and I think that's pretty amazing. But the fun part is yet to begin because um, I still need to edit the whole thing. I mean, I say I, I mean me and, and Brian, who's the director, but um, there's uh, hours and hours, 36 hours of footage uh, that I have to go through and pretty much clear up everything that is useless and unnecessarily to tell the story that we set ourselves to tell in the beginning. I guess the best equivalent to film editing is sculpting because you have this massive piece of stone, there's way too much of it and you have an idea and basically you just chisel away whatever is not necessarily to come to that thing that you envisioned in the beginning. Um, but there's, um, there's two problems, I, I don't have any stone and one of the things in my life I'm extremely bad at is sculpting so that was kind of out of the question for this vlog and um, I really had to clean my house plus if I make a vlog about me cleaning the house that's a definite proof for my girlfriend that I have actually indeed cleaned it so I thought that cleaning might be a good comparison to film editing it's not too good though but you get the idea Film editors are sort of the unsung heroes of the film business, if you want. In the editing you can either destroy or make one actor really good. Because you see, you get to choose which take you want to pick that will end up in the ending film. And if the take that you just decided to pick is not the best take of this actor, well then the actor will turn out bad. But if you're a good editor and manage to pick only the best performances, then you'll make a good actor. Also, there is this thing called Kuleshov effect and it's named by this Russian and he was the first one to notice that you can play around with emotions quite a lot in film editing. Now there's a lot of people who um, have said a lot on this topic and amongst all of them Hitchcock I think said it the best but I'll try and keep it short and make some sense. Let's say you have a shot of a guy who is looking at something very satisfactorily. Now you juxtapose a shot, I like this word juxtapose, basically you put another shot right after this one of a, I don't know, a very clean kitchen. Now these shots together, your mind makes a connection and you think, ah, this is a guy who likes his stuff clean and probably a very well behaved person and uh, is no menace to the society. But then again, you take the same exact shot of the guy looking very satisfactorily at something and you put him against a shot of, let's say, a woman in bed. Now what you get is pretty much a pervert. So I guess the lesson you can learn from this, if you're an actor and if you're not good to editors, they can very quickly turn you from a nice person to a pervert. But enough about film editing. I want to talk about why I think shooting a feature film in six days is an amazing achievement. You see, when making a film, you usually break it down into three parts. It's pre-production, production and post-production. Pre-production is usually kind of the safe part of the film. You write about stuff, you talk about stuff, if anything needs to be made, it's made either in workshops or somewhere inside and basically you have control over pretty much everything that's going on. In pre-production you you cast your, act your actors, you get your crew together, you analyze the script, you break down the script, you search for a location and basically try to get 
as many details down as possible so you don't have as many problems in the production. Pre-production is also when you talk everything, everything through with actors, where you rehearse a lot as much as possible. Again, that there's not as many problems later. It's in the production where things can and usually do go wrong. First, if you're shooting outside, there's always the weather, which was also the reason why we shot the feature in six instead of five days. Then, there's always a lot of people involved. So, people can get ill, they can get into accidents. Film set is a very, very tense place, so it gets the best out of people, which means that people might start argue and uh, you have to change them or swap them, which again takes you back time-wise. Then one thing that not many people are aware of is that every shot setup takes a lot of time. For instance, this shot works well for certain reasons and the light is okay and, and everything works. And in this shot the lights might not work because they might be in the background or something might not work. So it has to be reset every single time. Let's say you have two lines that you want in a close-up and then the next two or three lines you want in a wide shot. This means that for every those two or three lines you need to reset the complete camera settings and lights and everything. With my film, which is 10 pages long, it took us two days, so an average was five pages per day. And I think an average setup time for every shot was about 20 minutes, so you do the math. Then there's continuity, which means that everything in the shots that are, that are shot on the same set needs to look the same. Some shots might be taken days apart, but then later when editing, they might be edited one after another. And so if stuff on set looks different, people will notice it. Should I put sugar or just this sweetener? Ah, sugar, yes, it browns a bit. And considering what I've just said, achieving all of this in six days is pretty amazing. Francis Coppola said that um, he loves cooking because it's completely the opposite of filmmaking. Because with cooking you have the ingredients and you cook everything right away and then you have an immediate response from whoever you're feeding so you you get the feedback you know whether it's good or not and with the film you put it out there and then it takes ages to get any feedback and even then it's not really what it's supposed to be so that's why i chose cooking um probably not the best comparison is it that's still really good pancake Thank mm -hmm. you.